What? The deadline for the report is today? How am I going to get this done? What's going on over here, Scott? Sounds like you're breaking something. Oh, hey, boss. Finance wants the quarterly revenue projection report by this afternoon. So I've been working on that. Those finance guys. I understand you're working hard, but you're gonna have to keep it down a little bit, Scott. I've been getting a lot of complaints that you're making a lot of noise. Me? Make noise? Are you talking about my keyboard? They said you make a lot of ruckus and it's distracting. I need you to keep that down to a minimum. I got it, boss. I'll try to keep it down. To help you work quietly and improve your efficiency, I brought you something. Uh, thanks? Keep it down, Scott! But boss, this is creamy thock. What the hell did you call me? Welcome back to the channel guys, this is Scott K. Have you been enjoying your freshly made custom mech just to be hated by everyone at work? Your coworkers hate you, and your boss threatened to fire you for making a big ruckus. You know, once I had someone come to my desk and handed me another keyboard and asked me to please stop. Just stop. So, given that many of us are starting to go back to the office now, I decided I need to make the quietest keyboard for work and not get fired. You know, because I need my job to live. Help me get more subscribers and views guys, then maybe I'll be okay. So let's get started. All right, for this task, we're gonna be using the Windex 98 1800 format keyboard. Why this you say? Well, it's an 1800 keyboard with a numpad. It's practically made for work. Plus, this has a full size O or zero for the numpad. Either you're nodding your head at this point or you have no idea what I'm talking about, but that is okay. If you recall, I used the Windex 65 before to demonstrate how you could tune a board to be thocky or clacky. This time, I'm going to use the Windex 98 to show you how quiet a keyboard can be. I'll also show you how loud that same exact keyboard can be as reference as well. So once again, the power to shape your keyboard is in your hands. So the Windex 98 is a premium gasket mounted keyboard from Wind Studios. Immediately when you get this, you realize how cool the box is. I mean, look at this. The optical illusion of the little spinning propeller. Overall, the packaging is fantastic and the unboxing experience was top notch. Now, if you open up this box of goodies and you get bombarded by a bunch of stuff you need to actually build this keyboard. You get the screws, the case feet, and the tools, the gaskets. These are different from the Windex 65s. I'll get to that later. Then you also get the stabilizers and some stabilizer shims, which I really didn't need for the hot swap PCB because the thickness was actually normal. Moving on to the plate, my Windex 98 came with the standard PC plate along with the separate numpad plate and polycarbonate as well. Overall, the PC plate is devoid of any flex cuts, but honestly for PC plates, that's pretty much unnecessary because the plate themselves are so flexible to start with. However, the PCB is a different situation. This has to be one of the most unique PCBs I've seen recently since it's painted in this low reflection black paint. It's like a black hole and looks really cool and weird at the same time. But behind the paint, you can see that the PCB has cuts. Lots and lots of cuts. Not just horizontal cuts, but literally individual key segments are cut out for flex. We'll test this later. As usual, you'll see some KL style hot swap sockets behind the PCB as well. What is also interesting is that even for this hot swap PCB, Win Studio stacked multiple hot swap sockets so you can create different layouts and different spacebar configurations as well. So this is a very nice touch. Moving on to the case, the Windex 98 shares a lot of the similar visual characteristics of the smaller brother, the Windex 65. You have a very nice and edgy look with this floating slab design going on right here. I really love the small details like this little line that separates the upper and the lower portions of this keyboard like this. Similar to the X65, the X98 is mounted together by joining the top and the bottom frames as you can see right here. 
The anno on this keyboard is perfect on this gray and brown version that I have. I think they call this coffee or something. And it features this long brass weight below, which just peaks below like a little sliver next to the Windex 98 engraving, which I really thought was a nice detail. As you look further into the case, you see the daughter board in its little crevice. But wait, what is this? There's this big void right here. This is actually the space for you to be able to put a battery pack and turn the X98 into a Bluetooth wireless keyboard. That is awesome. Mine is actually hot swap, so it didn't come with it, but I believe the solder version does have the option to be fully wireless. Finally, the keyboard has a few adornments here and there, like this little brass weight above the arrow cluster, and also this little PVD chroma weight X by the escape key. I personally like this little detail because it adds a little bit of whimsy to otherwise a pretty serious looking keyboard, especially in this colorway. Now, this is 2022, so guess what is also included? Yep, foam. I think this is the most amount of foam I have ever seen in a keyboard as of late. Look how thick this is. So you have the thick lowercase foam, then you have the thin lowercase foam, then you have the under PCB foam, then the IXPE foam, then the plate foam. And obviously, you can't forget about the plate and the IXPE foams for the numpad section, right? Oh, also for the spacebar. Jeez. As always, you can either choose to use this or not. Before we start the build process, however, a quick word from our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is an online service that helps you print PCBs, do 3D printing, or even CNC machining. If you're an aspiring keyboard designer or whatever else designer, you can take your design and simply upload it to get something made quick. Or, if you have the source code for a PCB that you already have and you need a replacement, you can also get that done as well. They can handle all types of PCBs from your simple single layer designs to multi-layer stacks. Beyond PCBs, if you want to try making your own case, PCB Way can machine that as well. Remember when Glarsis made his triple keyboard? Yep, it was PCB Way that actually helped him make it. And finally, PCB Way has a platform called Shared Projects that provides a community for creators to show off their projects and designs. Obviously, keyboards are also a part and included in this process, so go and check it out. Since I'm trying to build the most dampened keyboard there is, I'll be using a lot of this foam. This board also comes with both thin and thick case foam. What I notice is that when you they include both foams like this, you don't have to actually use both, but you choose one or the other. Since I'm going for a quiet build, I want to dampen as much as possible, so I'm going to go with the thick one. Then, I will also use the under PCB foam as well for um, more dampening. For the PCB, I use the IXPE foam and the plate foam as well to keep the flexible PC plate from popping all my switches out. The IXPE won't do too much for a silent switch build like this, but hey, why not add an extra layer of dampening, right? Remember the gasket socks I talked about? Instead of the, have the typical pour-on gasket stuck to the case, you actually use these little silicone socks on the plate tab instead. I feel this design creates a more flexible board and helps to create a nice pop of sound as well. The whole thing just sits into the case like this, easy peasy. For stabs, I use the provided Gateron ink stabs lubed with Crytox 205. So this is supposed to be a silent build, minimal noise. But before we jump right into that, I do also want to show you how this board sounds like for a ruckus loving barbarian like me. For that, I will do the preliminary build with a set of Azure Dragon tactiles by Gateron. For keycaps, I use the PBT Fans Neon to emulate that X98 render I saw on the interest check page. It looked really nice, so I wanted to do the same thing. Also, it will provide a nice reference point to where the keyboard starts off, you know, as like a regular keyboard. So check it out. I did that typing test and wow, I was impressed at the sound this thing makes. I really didn't think this would sound so good, but man, 
It also owes it to the large case design, kind of acting like an amplifier. But after I heard this, I really, really, really hesitated to turn this into a quiet board. But the show must go on and the Azure Dragons must come out. By the way, the sound comes from the stock Azure Dragons. Like, I, I don't want to sound like a Gatoron fanboy, but their newly updated molds and lubing process, it's fantastic. Plus, the flex on this is pretty good. It's even better without anything inside, but hey, even with foam, it's not too bad at all. But we're going to go for that quiet build, so I do need the foam in here, and I don't want to get fired, so let's move on to that. Now, this is the most important part of the quiet build, the switches. There are a lot of things that help modify the sound of a keyboard. The case design, the material, the plate, the PCB, the foam, the PE sheet, the tape, etc. But these come secondary since they take the energy from the source and work off it or modifies it. So the source is the energy and sound created by the collisions inside the switch. So if the switch creates minimal energy or sound, there is pretty much nothing to transfer that into any other medium. Hence, why in a build like this, the switch is probably the most important factor of a quiet keyboard. I understand that there are many silent switches out there on the market right now, but I needed the best one, the most quiet. And asking around, I was told that MX Xilence are the way to go. What is an MX Xilence, you ask? It's a Franken switch where you combine the housing from a Zeal switch or Gateron Alias like this one here, and combine it with the stems from a Cherry MX Silent switch, like the one here from a Cherry Silent Red. Then, magic happens. You get a very nice and smooth and super quiet switch. So I put the entire keyboard full of this. Well, with the exception of the numpad as reference to show you how quiet this thing really is versus the section with the Azure Dragons. Although the PBT fans neon matched well, it, I felt it like matched a little too well and the whole thing looked like a gray candy bar. So I switched it up a little bit. So for keycaps, I changed it to the DCX Doge keycap set by Drop. I think the gray color palette of the Doge matches perfectly with the gray of the X98, but the two different tones actually helped to create a little bit more dynamism. So bam, looks good, but just how quiet is it? So if you recall, dB or decibels is a unit of measurement of sound pressure. dB is relative, but for the sake of comparison here, we will use the standard dB chart with zero as the minimum, since zero dBs is the minimum threshold of human hearing. If you're a human, you can't hear anything quieter than, than, than zero. So, you know, what's the point, right? On the other end of the spectrum, 130 dB is a considered a threshold for pain. Your like ears hurt. So my studio is in the basement and it's fairly quiet. It registers about 35 dBs, slightly above a whisper. The X98 with the Azure Dragons, it registers a whopping 69 dBs on average. That is actually equivalent to a noisy restaurant or a car running at 60 miles per hour or a vacuum cleaner. I can see why some people might find that annoying, right? The X98 with the MX Silence, what about that? It actually registers an average of 40 dB. That is pretty darn quiet, equivalent to a quiet room in your home or a light rainfall. So I guess I can call this a rainy day keyboard. I mean, it's like even gray, like an overcast day too. So now it's getting a little too poetic. Enough numbers, you say. What does 40 dB sound like? Let's take this for a typing test, shall we? What do you think? That is a pretty silent keyboard, I must say. With this, I may be able to keep my job or not since I couldn't get that quarterly forecast out on time. But hey, maybe you guys can help me out by subscribing and liking the content, right? Wink, wink. 
So as I have demonstrated before with the X65, not just the keyboard frequency, but also its volume can be changed depending on the components that you use. I know for this application, it's pretty much 90% with the switch, so the right one is very important as well. I'm X Silence, you cannot go wrong with this, trust me. Overall, my X98 is going to be the perfect office keyboard. It has a numpad with a real zero key. It's comfortable to type on due to its gasket structure. Now it's also dead quiet to keep even the most sensitive colleagues from losing their bowels. But I know every day I use this thing, there will be a small Scott inside of me that will say, remember how the X98 sounded so awesome with the Azure Dragons? Perhaps one day, I'll need to create a reason to get fired and that's what's gonna happen. As usual, if you like the content, please like and subscribe so I'll be okay even if I get fired. Thank you.